Welcome to Millennium News Hour. I am Tanziba Nauri. In today's bulletin, we will present top and trending news from across the nation and the world. Let's begin with the headlines. Remaining Columbia protesters face suspension. Trump held in contempt of court in New York trial for gag order violations. Four officers killed in North Carolina were at disadvantage as shots rained from above, police say. Two-year-old Arizona boy dies after Bounce House goes airborne in a strong gust of wind. Polls disinfo, EU probes, Facebook, Instagram. Six killed in mosque attack of Afghanistan. Chinese astronauts return to Earth after six months in space. Explosion in Cambodia that killed 20 at an army base was likely caused by mishandling of ammunition. King Charles III resumes public duties. At least 25 dead in Peru after bus plunges into ravine. India's T20 World Cup 2024 squad Risha Pant in Shubman Gill out. And LeBron's Lakers eliminated as Nuggets Murray hits let hook. You are listening to headlines, now news in detail. Student protesters at Brown University agreed to end their encampment today after assurances that they will be permitted to present their case on divestment to the school's trustees in the fall. University officials said Brown President Christina H. Paxson announced the agreement in a news release saying that Paxson will ask the school's advisory committee to provide a recommendation on divestment by the end of September. The matter will then be brought to a vote at the October meeting of the corporation, Brown's governing body. Additionally, a group of students will meet with five members of the governing body in May. Earlier this afternoon, pro-Palestinian demonstrators began gathering in front of Columbia University's Amsterdam Avenue entrance, which is the only open entry point to the university's Morningside Heights campus currently. Only residents of the Morningside Heights dorms as well as essential staff have access to the Morningside Heights campus. Over the last hour, NYPD's on-site presence outside the gates appeared to have grown considerably. A student protest organizer said that since last night, Columbia University has targeted at least three Palestinian students for suspension, allegedly regardless of their involvement in the encampment protest, including one involved in Columbia University apartheid divest negotiations. Columbia has not provided details about the suspended students. The student organizer, who declined to share her name at an afternoon news conference, said Hamilton Hall was taken over by autonomous protesters who are in solidarity with CUAD's demands for the university to divest and for financial transparency regarding its investments and holdings. She said this morning's takeover of the campus building 
was made with mass support by students. It's not clear how many students have been suspended since the school's deadline yesterday to vacate the encampment, but the organizer gave a rough estimate of at least 20. The judge in Donald Trump's New York hush money trial has held the former United States president in contempt of court for repeatedly violating a gag order. The order prohibited Trump from speaking publicly and posting on social media about individuals involved in the trial. Judge Yuan Merchant on Tuesday said Trump had violated the order nine times. He fined Trump $1,000 per violation, with nine of his statements identified as breaching the order. The fine came to a total of 9000 Prosecutors had detailed 14 possible violations to the court, and Merchant could make more determinations at a hearing on Thursday. The judge also ordered Trump to remove seven offending posts from his Truth Social account and two from a campaign website by Tuesday afternoon. He added that Trump was hereby warned that the court will not tolerate continued willful violations of its lawful orders and that, if necessary and appropriate under the circumstances, it will impose an incarceratory punishment. The decision came as Trump's criminal trial entered its third week, with witness testimony continuing on Tuesday. Four law enforcement officers in North Carolina who were killed while trying to capture a man immediately faced gunfire as they approached, unable to withstand shots from upstairs in a house, authorities say Tuesday. Still reeling from Monday's attack, the deadliest against U.S. law enforcement officers since 2016, investigators in Charlotte said they weren't sure whether there was a second shooter and that more work was needed to determine what happened. Charlotte isn't going to be the last place that this happens, Mayor Vyliles said, but Charlotte will be the place that will heal, that will heal with dignity and respect for everyone. A task force made up of officers from different agencies had arrived in the suburban neighborhood to try to capture Terry Clark Hughes Jr., who was wanted for possession of a firearm by an ex-felon and fleeing to elude in Lincoln County, North Carolina. Those killed were identified as Sam Ploge and William Elliott of the North Carolina Department of Adult Corrections, Charlotte Mecklenburg Officer Joshua Iyer, and Deputy U.S. Marshal Thomas Wicks. Four other officers were wounded in the shootout, and Hughes was also killed. An AR-15 semi-automatic rifle, a 40 caliber handgun, and ammunition were found at the scene. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news, entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony. Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV, and also in all European countries and Australia, available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network, and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your face. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. A two-year-old boy died in a tragic accident after a bounce house went airborne in Arizona on Saturday, 
authorities said. The incident occurred around 5 p.m. near Casa Grande, a city about 50 miles south of Phoenix, according to a statement from the Penal County Sheriff's Office. Several children were playing in a bounce house when a strong gust of wind sent it airborne into the neighboring lot. The sheriff's office said a two-year-old child was transported to the hospital where he passed away. A second child was hospitalized with injuries that were not considered life-threatening. This appears to have been a tragic accident, the sheriff's office said. The child's parents were identified as Curl and Christy, according to a verified GoFundMe page. Curl is a firefighter in Phoenix and the dead child was identified as Bodhi, the webpage said. Now it's time for global updates. The EU on Tuesday launched an investigation into Meta's Facebook and Instagram over concerns the platforms are failing to counter disinformation ahead of EU elections in June. The probe is under the EU's new Digital Services Act, a landmark law that cracks down on illegal content online and forces the world's biggest tech companies to do more to protect users online. The European Commission said it suspected Meta's moderation of adverts was insufficient and that an increase in paid spots in those conditions could harm electoral processes. Facebook and Instagram are among 23 very large online platforms that must comply with the DSA or risk fines up running up to 6% of a platform's global turnover or even a ban for egregious cases. Six people were killed when a gunman stormed a mosque in western Afghanistan, a government spokesman said Tuesday. Interior Ministry spokesman Abdul Martin Khani said that Monday night around 9 p.m., an unknown armed person shot at civilian worshippers in a mosque in Herat province's Guzara district. Six civilians were murdered and one civilian was injured. He wrote on social media platform X early Tuesday morning. The state-run Bakhtar news agency gave the same death toll for the attack, which took place in a district just south of the provincial capital of Herat City. While no group has yet claimed the attack, analysts say the regional chapter of Islamic State is the largest security threat in Afghanistan. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, world news, business news, health and science related news, entertainment news, sports news, and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony. Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV, and Apple TV, and also in all European countries and Australia, available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network, and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your face. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. You are watching latest global updates. China's Shenzhou 17 spacecraft returned to Earth Tuesday, carrying three astronauts who have completed a six month mission aboard the country's orbiting space station. The three Tang Hongbo, Tang Shengji, and Jiang Xinlin landed at the Dongfeng site in North China's. Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region in the Gobi Desert shortly before 6 p.m. It comes roughly four days after the Shenzhou 18 mission docked with the station with their three-member replacement crew on board. 
China built its own space station after being excluded from the International Space Station largely because of U.S. concerns over the Chinese military's total control of the space program amid a sharpening competition in technology between the two geopolitical rivals. This year, the Chinese station is slated for two cargo spacecraft missions and two manned space flight missions. China's ambitious space program aims to put astronauts on the moon by 2030, as well as bring back samples from Mars around the same year and launch three lunar probe missions over the next four years. The new crew is made up of Commander Ye Guangfu, a veteran astronaut who took part in the Shenzhou 13 mission in 2021, and fighter pilots Li Kong and Li Guangshu, who were space flight rookies. A huge explosion in southwestern Cambodia over the weekend that killed 20 soldiers at an army base appears to have been an accident caused by mishandling of ammunition by troops, a senior military official said Tuesday. The Saturday afternoon blast in Kampong Spu province also destroyed military vehicles and four buildings at the base and damaged homes in a nearby village. Army spokesperson Major General Mao Fala said the soldiers were transferring ammunition from trucks into a storage facility when the blast occurred, killing them instantly. He said another 11 people, including soldiers and nearby villagers, were slightly injured, mostly from debris from the damaged buildings, not shrapnel. Cambodia held a mass funeral on Sunday for those killed in the explosion. The initial but still not official theory was that the soldiers were unloading ammunition from a truck and stacking it on the ground before moving it into the storage facility, causing one item to explode, he said. That set off a chain reaction, added Mauvela. However, he said it will be difficult to determine the exact chain of events as all those involved in the unloading were killed. King Charles III on Tuesday reportedly told fellow cancer patients, I am well, as he carried out his first official public engagement since being diagnosed with the condition. The British head of state appeared relaxed as he and his wife Queen Camilla met patients and staff at the University College Hospital Macmillan Cancer Centre in central London. Charles suspended most of his duties in February after cancer was found while he was being treated for an enlarged prostate the previous month. The exact nature of his cancer has not been disclosed, but doctors said last week they were very encouraged by the progress of his treatment as an outpatient and positive about his recovery. At least 25 people died and more than a dozen were injured when a bus plunged into a ravine from a mountain road in northern Peru, local authorities said Monday. Local officials Olga Bobatila told RPP Radio the incident late Sunday happened on a potholed dirt road in the Andean region of Cajamarca, and the bus fell into an abyss some 200 meters deep. The toll was updated from an initial 23 to 25 later in the day. The bus with more than 50 passengers ended up on the edge of a river and some of those on board were swept away by the water, municipal official Jamie Herrera said. Rescue workers and firefighters were at the scene of the crash from where the injured have been evacuated to hospital. We will be back after a short break. Till then, stay with us. This world continuously revolving around various events. Every minute, every second, something is happening somewhere around the globe. And you want to get connected to that event or to that specific moment. Here we come, Millennium News Hour, to get you connected with top USA and international trending news, which includes local news, political news, 
world news, business news, health and science related news, entertainment news, sports news and so on. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TV such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV and also in all European countries and Australia available with the Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with Millennium News Hour to get the world news on your face. Welcome back to Millennium News Hour. Now it's time for business news. Today's New York stock close price is 17,603.34. The NYC composite is decreased by 227.73 points or 1.28%. Tokyo stock close price is 38,405.66. The Nikkei 225 index is increased by 470.90 points or 1.24%. Shanghai stock close price is 3,104.82. The Shanghai index is decreased by 8.22 points or 0.26%. Hong Kong stock close price is 17,763.03. The Hang Seng index is increased by 16.12 points or 0.09%. Bombay stock close price is 74,482.78. The Sensex index is decreased by 188.50 points or 0.25%. Let's have a look on today's sports stories. Rishabh Pant has found his way back into the Indian cricket team after being included in the country's 15-man squad for the ICC Men's T20 World Cup 2024. The wicketkeeper batter, who suffered multiple injuries in a horrific life-threatening car crash in December 2022, made his comeback to the game earlier this month with his Indian Premier League franchise Delhi Capitals. Pant was one of the few players whose inclusion in the T20 World Cup squad would have been subject to some scrutiny given his lack of professional outings in recent months. However, Indian selectors have put their weight behind the attacking batter who has scored 987 runs in 66 T20 internationals. Rohit Sharma will lead India's quest for a second T20 World Cup title with all-rounder Hardik Pandya as his deputy. Another power hitter, Rinku Singh, was named among the four reserve players despite raking up rounds for India in the recent bilateral T20 series. Opener Shubman Gill also finds himself on the sidelines after the selectors opted to go with recent breakout batter Yashasvi Jaiswal as captain Rohit's opening partner. Mohammad Shiraj and Arshdeep Singh will bolster the pace bowling department spearheaded by Jasprit Bumrah while Yuzvendra Chahal is part of a four-pronged spin attack alongside Ravindra Jadeja, Kuldeep Yadav and Akshar Patel. Jamal Murray hit a tie-breaking 14-footer with less than 4 seconds left to send the host Denver Nuggets to the Western Conference semifinals with a 108-106 win over the Los Angeles Lakers in Game 5 of a first-round playoff series. The second-seeded Nuggets won the best of seven series. 4-1 and will face the third-seeded Minnesota Timberwolves in the Western Conference semifinals beginning on Saturday in Denver. 
as he did in Game 2. Murray came alive in the fourth quarter and beat Los Angeles with a clutch jumper. He finished with a game-high 32 points, 12 in the fourth quarter despite playing on a strained left cuff. Murray said of the deja vu moment, it's amazing. Those are shots that you dream of as a little kid and practice in your backyard at the playground. Nikola Jokic had 25 points, 20 rebounds, 9 assists, and 7 turnovers. Michael Porter Jr. scored 26 points, and Aaron Gordon grabbed 13 rebounds for the Nuggets. LeBron James put up 30 points, 11 assists, and 9 rebounds for the 7 seeded Lakers. Anthony Davis had 17 points and 15 rebounds while playing through an injured left shoulder. Let's have a look on today's weather forecast. Before finishing today's news, let's hear out the headlines again. Remaining Columbia protesters face suspension. Trump held in contempt of court in New York trial for gag order violations. Four officers killed in North Carolina were at disadvantage as shots rained from above, police say. 
Two-year-old Arizona boy dies after bounce house goes airborne in a strong gust of wind. Polls disinfo, EU probes Facebook, Instagram. Six killed in mosque attack of Afghanistan. Chinese astronauts return to Earth after six months in space. Explosion in Cambodia that killed 20 at an army base was likely caused by mishandling of ammunition. King Charles III resumes public duties. At least 25 dead in Peru after bus plunges into ravine. India's T20 World Cup 2024 squad Risha Pant in Shubman Gill out. And LeBron's Lakers eliminated as Nuggets Murray hits let hope. That's all for today. Keep watching Millennium News Hour for latest news update. To stay updated, like our Facebook page, subscribe our YouTube channel and visit our website. Our website address is www.millenniumnews24.com. Millennium News 24 is transmitted and available to be watched free for all at TVs such as Sony, Samsung, LG, Roku TV, Amazon TV and Apple TV and also in all European countries and Australia available with a Sky Network, Worldwide Jago TV, Radiant IPTV, Worldwide Jago BD Network and Horizon Satellite globally. Stay connected with us for all the latest news worldwide. Thank you.